My name is Dr. Patricia Mousset, and I'm a family physician and anesthetist here at Winchester District Memorial Hospital. And you may be watching this video because either you or your loved one will be coming to have surgery with us. We felt that it was important to try to give you some information on how to prepare so you can be in your best shape possible for when you have surgery. So if you have the luxury of a few weeks or maybe sometimes even a few months before your booked surgery, it's good to try to take time and think about how you can prepare your body. Just like preparing for a big race, there's a few things that you can do. Most of it has to do with healthy habits. You can get a little bit more guidance from your family doctor. But here's the list of what you might want to think about. The first one has to do with eating. So, nutritious food. Try to focus on eating well. And if you can cut out a little bit of junk food, that's great. That might help you lose a couple pounds that might be a bit too much. And even sometimes losing a few pounds can help you get through surgery more easily. It's not a time for dramatic weight loss, but if there's a little bit that you can do in that department, that's great. If you drink alcohol, try to make sure it's not more than one to two drinks per day. If you're drinking more than that, now would be a good time to try to cut down gradually so that you don't have any trouble with withdrawal. The second point that we'd like to talk to you about is fitness. Now, it's good for everyone to try to exercise and we understand that it's not always easy. If you have a little bit of time before your surgery and you can go for a walk once a day, that would be great. It helps to build some muscle mass and more core muscle mass also helps you get through the surgery more easily. If going out for a walk isn't something that you're able to do right now, that's okay, there's some other things that you could do. If you find yourself at home watching TV and during a commercial, you can do some exercises. Go from sitting on your chair to standing up and you could repeat that five to 10 times during the commercial. Even this will build your muscle mass. And if you can't build muscle mass with your leg exercises, then you could do some gentle arm lift exercises also. Any of these things can be, something can be in your reach to try to improve your fitness a little bit before the big day. Now the next thing that we like to talk about, which is a tough one, is stop smoking. The reason for this is because when you're under anesthetic, your lungs are doing a bigger job than they usually do. And any smoke, whether it's from cannabis or whether it's from tobacco, whether it's from cigarettes or whether it's from vape, any smoke can damage your lungs. And if you're able to take that out before your surgery, you'll do better. Also, wound healing is better in non-smokers. If you'd like to use a nicotine patch or you'd like to use nicotine gum, that's fine. It's the cigarettes that are the problem. Again, you can see your family doctor for some help with this. Also, there's a great website. My Association of Ontario Anesthesiologists has a section of their website called Stop Smoking for Safer Surgery. Do what you can and we'd like to help you if we can. Now, the last one that we'd like to tell you about is infection prevention. So in the few weeks before surgery, try to not catch a cold. The best way to do this is with good hand washing and try to stay away from people who are sick in the two weeks before your surgery. We happen to be filming this video during the COVID pandemic and that makes everything a little bit more difficult for you. We'd just like to talk to you about how you can keep yourself most safe having surgery during the pandemic. The most important piece is to try to not expose yourself to the virus in the 14 days prior to surgery. The ways to do this is to avoid big unnecessary crowds and to avoid traveling to places with high COVID prevalence. If you have a job where you have to be in contact with the public, try to follow the public health guidelines. They're listed on our website. Keep six feet, two meters apart, wear a mask, careful hand washing. If you have a job where you're not able to stay socially distanced, it might be worthwhile asking your surgeon to have a period of time off work before your surgery. Alternatively, we may ask you to go for a COVID test before your surgery. Right now, we're very fortunate and our COVID prevalence has been quite low. Because of that, we're not testing everyone before surgery. However, this may change. In either case, We'll be able to do everything that we can with your help to keep everyone safe. Now, if you're wondering about how the day-to-day -day will be around the time of your surgery, 
we could take a little tour. Come with me. The day of your surgery, when you come into the hospital, you'll come into the lobby and you can take the elevators or the stairs and go up to the second floor. You'll be looking for the surgical daycare unit. That's where our fantastic perioperative nursing team will greet you and we'll get you ready for the next step. As your surgery date approaches, you'll probably be wondering about some specifics that have to do with how you manage your medications and other items regarding your particular case. We'll be phoning you and probably arrange a preoperative phone appointment. Some patients need to talk to a nurse, some need to talk to a nurse and physician, and some cases that are very straightforward don't need a pre-op appointment at all. We do, however, ask that you fill in our pre-op questionnaire and that you give us a specific list of medications, including doses, as well as your height and weight. Once we get that information, we'll advise you on which medications you should continue and which medications might need to be stopped before surgery. You'll also have an opportunity to ask questions. The most common question that people ask is, how long am I going to be here? That is a tough one to answer. I can tell you that most people are here at least three hours and most people do go home around supper time when they're here for day surgery. The time of your surgery is dependent on what actually is happening for you, but the amount of time that you're here also depends on the cases that go ahead of you. And sometimes surgical times are a little bit unpredictable. Please plan on being here the whole day. On the actual day of your surgery, you can pack a bag that includes all your medications, a CPAP machine if you have one, if you have any extra health insurance, the information on that. And if you'd like to bring music to listen to with earphones, please do. We want to try to keep you as comfortable as possible. The night before surgery, please stop eating at midnight. The morning of your surgery, you can drink clear fluids until three hours before your arrival time. Clear fluids are water, black tea, black coffee, or clear apple juice. Welcome to the operating room. My name is Dr. Michelle Davey, and I too will be part of the surgical safety pause in order to make sure that surgery goes as safe and as smooth as possible. When you come into the operating room, you'll be greeted with the rest of our team. Our wonderful perioperative nurses will help get you through this comfortably. You will already have met your surgeon and anesthetist and talked about the plan with them. Also, you may need a family physician who is assisting for the surgery. You might notice that we repeat the same questions. That's so that every person who's involved in your care gets to hear the answer straight from you. It's a way to keep things safer. When you come into the room, we'll hook you up again with a blood pressure monitor, heart monitors, oxygen monitor. We'll make sure that you're comfortable. Then the team will gather around and we'll do what we call our safety pause. This is kind of like the pre-flight check. Everyone reviews one last time what the plan is and one more time you'll have a chance to ask us any questions. We check and double check, make sure everyone's on the same page and then we'll go ahead with the anesthetic. Now, let's talk about anesthetics. There's two main roles that anesthetic medications have. One is to decrease your awareness, and the second is to decrease pain. Some combinations of medications will do both. The simplest one to understand is a sedative. When you have a small procedure and you just want to relax, often the surgeon will put some local anesthetic and the anesthetist will administer a small amount of medication through your intravenous. This will make you not aware of what's happening and the surgery goes quite well. The patient stays in control of their own bodily functions. For a bigger surgery, we'll often use a general anesthetic. This involves more medications and medications that can impact your breathing. Because of that, we do place a small tube in the back of your airway and we use a ventilator machine to assist with your breathing. The general anesthetic often involves giving medications to reduce pain as well. The third way that we often do anesthetics is with a spinal or an epidural anesthetic. This primarily reduces pain. We place a small needle between the lower bones of the back and make you numb from the waist down. 
For some surgeries, like a cesarean section, the patient can be wide awake while the surgery is happening. But for a lot of surgeries, we understand that you might not want to be wide awake and therefore we'll use a spinal combined with some sedative to decrease the awareness. There's a lot of options of what we can do and we like to choose what's best for you given your particular situation and your particular surgery. You'll have plenty of time to talk with your anesthetist before you come into the operating room about what you feel is the best choice for you. Hello, my name is Joanne. I'm one of the many nurses that work here in the post-anesthetic care unit at Winchester District Memorial Hospital. Immediately after your surgery, the OR team will bring you into the recovery room. We're gonna hook you up to monitors, possibly put some oxygen on you. We'll keep you warm and safe until you're ready to go home. At that point, we'll contact your family, update your condition, and make arrangements for when and where to pick you up. We'll review specific instructions detailed to your surgery and make sure that you go home with printed copies for your family to review as well. After any surgery, you can't drive a car for 24 hours after anesthetic, you can't drive if you're taking prescription pain meds, and you shouldn't drive until full mobility is returned to make it safe. Also, we like you to follow a light diet and gradually increase back to normal. Leisurely activity is always encouraged, but nothing strenuous, and we'll make sure it's specific to your surgery. We do look forward to getting you through your surgical journey safely. If you have any questions, please let us know.